welcome to this particular slide show where i will be discussing with you strategies for enhancement in food production it is chapter 9 of your textbook and 9.1 animal husbandry animal husbandry what is animal husbandry if this question if anyone want to ask you or you have answered in your examination say it's a branch of agro industry it is animal husbandry is the controlled cultivation management and production of domestic animals by breeding animals like cows buffaloes pigs horses sheep hen and other animals are bred for quality improvement and also for what man wants to be type of meat type of milk type of fur whatever he desires that can be taken that can be controlled by animal husbandry and uh, animals are bred and raised for utility for food for fur for sports for pleasure and also for research animal husbandry further we can explain that it deals with the care and breeding of livestock especially buffaloes cows pigs horses cattle sheep etc principles of biological technological molecular genetic biochemical veterinary disciplines are all employed for this purpose especially the purpose is to improve the quality and also higher yield of biological products in these from these animals which are consumed by human beings for various purposes to take it further animal husbandry includes poultry farming and also fisheries and dairy management fisheries include rearing catching selling of fish also it includes shell animals like mollusks and also crustaceans like prawns crabs etc which have been taken by human beings as delicacies since time immemorial animals like bees silkworm prawns crabs fishes birds pigs cattle sheep camels all these animals have been used by humans for various activities including products like production of milk eggs meat wool silk honey and also well delicious and delicacies of prawns and crabs so animal husbandry takes care of all these important forms of food materials for human beings the management of farm and farm animals dairy and farm management is very important and it uh, it will help us to produce good yielding animals and also very good products management of animals for milk and its products for human consumption is the activity in the dairy and the processes and systems and technologies are used to increase the yield and quality of both the farm animals and the milk we have more than 75 million rural cattle farms in india which produce a large amount of milk in our country when we think of dairy management it refers to the rearing of cows especially for milk we are the largest milk producers in the world milk product producers include milk butter cheese ghee curds and many savouries milk yield is 
primarily dependent on the quality of breeds. Our country has much high yielding breeds like Gir, Gir and Jersey. Every state in India has dairy farms. Let us try to look at this PPT. Uh, in the PPT, there is an image having six images of the cows. They are different breeds. They are high yielding breeds. A breed refers to you a specific group of domestic animals which are homogeneous and similar in appearance, in behavior and also in genetic factors. They can be, but they can be distinguished from other specific breeds by phenotype. If you look at these six different images given there in the right side, there are six uh, cows, all of them belong to different breeds but they can be easily identified by their appearance. One is a Sindhi type, other is a Haryana type, other is a Jersey type, like that one, like that there are different breeds are there in that. So, uh, breeding, artificial insemination, moiet, all these techniques will produce different kinds of breeds which are specially required for high yielding type. Man can plan, man can produce using different techniques the desirable quality of breeds for the benefit of human welfare. Breeding refers to mating of superior animals. When I say superior animals, male no, bull known for its uh, strength and lean meat, etc. Similarly, superior female cow refers to a cow known for yielding very good quality of milk, a milk that contains uh, different types of proteins useful for the human beings. So, these two are called superior animals. Such animals are selected. They are called superior animals, the male and the female, that is the bull and the cow. They are mated by means of, uh, by the farm managers and that would produce high yielding progeny and that progeny will be collected and they become a large number of organisms of this type, first generation, second generation, third generation like that. So, they will become ultimately a herd. The major purpose of breeding is to produce herd of known or well-known desired triads. That is the most important objective of breeding. Now let us look into breeding practices. There are four different types of breeding altogether which you should know. One is called inbreeding, second is called outbreeding, Third one refers to the artificial insemination by means of veterinary doctors and also the fourth type where we produce good breeds by means of multiple evolution embryo transfer technology. Again, they are all taken care by uh, veterinary doctors. Animal breeding, especially of any type, aims at increasing the yield of animal products and also improves the desirable qualities of the produce both in the progeny and in the products produced by these uh, organisms. Let us see what inbreeding means. See the word inbreeding uh, refers to mating of more closely related individuals which are genetically connected from the same degree. That is one, two superior animals, the male and female are mated. From them, three to four or five or six progenies are obtained and from them they select again the pure lines and those pure lines are inbred. They are homozygous pure lines. You remember the Mendel's laws 
when four to five generations are produced by hybridization, you get pure lines which are homozygous for a particular quality. That means that will be dominant. If a cow is uh, producing uh, good milk with casein and such homozygous animals are selected for breeding purposes. Uh, but this in type of inbreeding ultimately if it is continued for a long time will bring in a condition called breeding depression. That means the good quality of the uh, progeny is lost and where the, uh, the breeding depression continues to grow where desirable products are not produced, they become weak and weak and ultimately there will be no good deal. So the inbreeding practice can be done for some time but not continuously. That is an indication. If you want to read this further, maybe you can go to uh, Google and find out more about what do you mean by breeding depression. But <coughs> outbreeding uh, refers to breeding of unrelated animals. That means they should not come from the same pedigree or from the same parentage. They may be individuals of the same breed but not from the same pedigree or from the parental generation and uh, they may be they may not have any common ancestors also so such animals are crossed the superior male and the superior female are breeded or uh, mated so that they get a good progeny and that kind of uh, breeding gives better organisms or better, better individuals are called better breeds so that they have better yield. Outcrossing or between different breeds that means two different breeds are taken one from one mate from the male other may be female other should be female in other words so male and female superiors are mated from different breeds and that also gives a good progeny. Outcrossing or between different breeds or different species is always encouraged. It's sometimes called outcrossing or also outbreeding. And there is one more type of uh, breeding called interspecific breeding or interspecific hybridization. Hybridization means two different pure lines are taken and they are mated. Uh, most of the um, hybridization of this type goes for uh, working organisms, not for a milk killing organism. Mule is an example where a horse and a, a donkey are mated to get what's called mule. So that is uh, useful for hard work. Here is one more uh, example of breeding and this is called controlled breeding. It refers to the uh, work of veterinary doctors and specialists where they do what's called artificial insemination. That means semen of a bull extracted that's a what they call the superior bull is extracted and introduced into the uh, reproductive duct of a superior female and then the eggs are fertilized inside that the zygote is made to grow inside the genetical mother or the uh, female which receives the semen from the bull and that is another kind of uh, getting very good breeds. And there is one more type uh, which is technically different uh, from what we call the artificial insemination that is called uh, moiet short form. If you expand it, it becomes multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology. The word indicates multiple ovulation embryo 
tech transfer. So they what they do is they inject the uh, hormone called follicle stimulating hormone for a superior female, and that superior female matures earlier, and she will create at least more than six to eight eggs instead of one egg, one ova, because you know when cow, when cows give birth to young ones, cows they do it either one or sometimes twins will come. But in this case, when the when the hormone is introduced, you may get eight or ten ova, which are inseminated once again by means of artificial insemination, and the zygotes are taken out, fertilized eggs are taken out, and they will be given to eight different surrogate mothers. That means eight different females are selected, and into their uterus, these zygotes are introduced, where they grow into new individual. That is a new technique, and these things require more technological advances and more uh, veterinary uh, information, and that has to be handled by only uh, highly skilled and, uh, and veterinary doctors. That will also give extremely good breeds. Instead of one good breeding uh, animal, you may get at the same time six or eight individuals. These methods are followed in the modern day techniques. So therefore, advances are increasing and uh, we are getting more and more good breeds which can yield better uh, meat, uh, good milk, all these utilities are possible from the new techniques. Whatever the type of breed you get it, or uh, whatever the methods you get the best yielding uh, breed, but farming and taking care of them is very important. The quality and quantity of the fodder you give it to these animals also will decide the type of yield they produce. Stringent cleanliness and hygiene is required because these animals which are genetically uh, handled by veterinary people that means they are not very natural or wild type and they are susceptible to diseases. Therefore, we must have stringent cleanliness and hygiene to maintain. If you visit any dairy forum, you can see what is the amount of care they take to uh, look after these high yielding, high yielding animals, especially cows or it may be sheep, it may be hen. You know, sometimes uh, in the um, if you go to a uh, poultry where sometimes some disease occurs, the entire poultry is lost. And that is the type of uh, thing that may be happening if the hygiene is not taken care. And thirdly, when once the materials are produced and the produce comes out, there must be good storage and also good transport. It cannot be stored for a longer time. So when the milk is produced in bulk, it has to be stored in cold storage within 24 hours maybe the milk may be spoiled. Therefore, transporting, marketing are also very important when once we go to high yielding variety type. And these processes have become highly now uh, technologically oriented. They are, they are all made by machines. Even uh, lactation is made by machine. Storing is made by machine. And um, bacterial uh, infection is removed by machines. Everything happens by machines. Even bottling and then uh, whatever the type of uh, saturates we get, milk, everything is now uh, highly technically oriented. And therefore, we should thank the technologies and we should thank the veterinary science people for getting us a better variety of materials for our drinking and also for milk products. Well, we, we have just covered a few ideas about uh, the animal husbandry and farming. Diary items have been discussed here. 
I would like you to look into these three questions. One is explain in brief the role of animal husbandry in human welfare. The science called animal husbandry, how it is going to help the in human welfare. That means the mass production of milk, mass production of milk products are made, how it is made and how it is useful, including maybe the poultry, including maybe the meat industry, it may be milk industry, all these things are uh, now taken care by animal husbandry. Try to explain that. Second question is, what is meant by the term breed? Try to explain the word breed in your own words and then say, what are the objectives of the animal breeding? Why, why we will not go for wild type of uh, uh, um, uh, organisms for producing milk, why are we going for breeding? Breeding is an artificial method or a, a man plant uh, mating type. So why do we go for that? The third is name the methods employed in animal breeding. According to you, which of the methods would be best? So we discussed four different types of uh, breeding act, breeding techniques. Try to find out which one would be most appropriate and good for your locality. So you try to do little more of research from the Google and find out. Well, I am coming to the end of this particular day's talk on animal husbandry. Uh, we have discussed a few methods. We discussed what is the meaning of animal husbandry. We discussed what is breeding. We discussed a few Indian breeds. We talked about the artificial insemination and the techniques used by veterinary science for various uh, productivity of the milk and uh, also the farm products. Now I would like to end this talk by giving my uh, gratefulness, my credits to NCRT textbook and also Google for information, a Creative Commons for taking one image and YouTube maybe because they are publishing this particular uh, uh, clip for the class 12 students. I would like to thank you all. Wait for the next one. Uh, talk to in the next session, please.